Hello and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church Online. This week in worship, Pastor David has a message for graduates and reminds us all that God is our constant. Let's listen. Well, years ago, I went on a mission trip to the mountains of Costa Rica, and it was not at all what I expected. I thought Costa Rica, it's going to be warm, humid, but we went in October, and it was cold, and it was rainy, and we did really, really hard construction work for an entire week. I, I don't think I've ever been so exhausted on a mission trip. We decided that weekend, kind of after we did seven days worth of, of hard physical labor, that we were going to explore Costa Rica a little bit by going to the coast. We wanted to see the region of, of Jaco in Costa Rica. And while we were there, a couple of the, the buddies that I went on the mission trip with said, we're doing a deep sea fishing expedition. Do you want to come with us? I thought to myself, oh, I've done fishing before. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll go with you. Now, my fishing experience mostly had been in lakes, primarily, uh, and I'd been catching, if I was lucky, four to five pound fish. But I thought to myself, yeah, I've I've done fishing, so I'll, I'll come with you. Yeah, deep sea fishing expedition, sure. Right away, I noticed that there were quite a few things that were different. For instance, when I fish, I was used to having one fishing pole. That was my reel that I could cast in and out. Not so on this boat. This boat had 10 lines that were all over the boat, already set up, that were permanently being cast out. The boat would then just drive around, and the the casting was done for you as the lines were out behind our boat. The second thing I learned is that when one of those 10 lines caught something, then the guide would yell your name, you'd run up, they would put a belt around you, and on that belt was a place that you could place your fishing fishing pole in. I had really no idea why. After all, I, I had never fished like this before. I did not need a belt for four or five pound fish, But I learned why the first time they called my name. They they said, David. I was like, oh, it's my time. So I run up there. They put the belt on me, hand me the fishing pole. I put it in, and I just about got pulled into the water because we were not catching four or five pound fish. No. On that line, I learned later, was a 40 pound mahi mahi. I cannot tell you how challenging it was to, to wrestle that fish to hold my footing, to try to reel it in while almost being pulled overboard. Yes, I had never fished like this before. The, the experience, the moment that really crystallized how different this was for me was the moment that I'm, I'm putting all my strength into reeling in this fish, and then it jumps completely out of the water, all 40 pounds of it, before splashing back down and then wrestling away from me. Well, what do you think? Do you think I caught it? Uh, We got a picture. We'll show you. I did. I ended up reeling in the mahi-mahi. You can see just how disgusting I look after a week uh, on a mission trip, totally unshowered and and unshaven. Uh, Really, that could be many of our pandemic selves. I'm not totally sure. Um, But that was a completely new experience for me. I'd never gone fishing like that. Well, graduates, I want to talk with you today because you are also entering into a time where you're going to say, I've never done that before. Just like I said, I've never done fishing like that before. You are now entering into a whole new world where you're you're leaving the comfort of, of where you were learning, whether that's high school or college, and and where you are comfortable, and now you're moving into this new experience that, that's very different and, and very challenging from what you would be used to. You see, on a normal year, graduation is a big deal, and it's a big change, and this is not a normal year. My hope is that you will find encouragement in our scriptures today to face the new challenges and the new experiences that are in your future. 
all of us. Really, this scripture is for all of us who face new challenges and new experiences. Those times when you say, well, I've never done it like that before. I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a sneak preview over what the main point of this message is, because then you can really track it as we uh, un, uh, unload on the, the scripture and see where this main point shows up. But the main point is this. God is your constant. God can be and will be with you no matter where you go and no matter where life takes you. So uh, college students, high school graduates, wherever God takes you this fall, God is still present with you. God can be your constant. Even when the whole world seems different, God is there. That's going to be what you'll see time and time again in our scripture this morning. We are going to study a poem. It's called a psalm, and it was written several thousand years ago. It's Psalm 16. And the psalmist begins uh, talking really about three different ways about how God can be that steadying, consistent presence in your life despite what else is going on. Let's begin by reading the first verse. It says this, Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Yes, in God I take refuge. How do you do that? How do you take refuge in God? God is not a physical location. You cannot enter God like you could a building. When I think of taking refuge, I think of a a big storm system that moves in. It is raining and pouring. There's thunder. There's lightning. You are chilled to the bone, and then you find shelter, and you enter in. You go through the door, and there's a roof over your head, and that's where you find refuge. Or I think of the shows I watch when there's an army, and, and that army is, is outnumbered and outmaneuvered and, and outskilled, and the refuge for them is those castle walls, right? They get in the castle, they're behind the big, strong walls, they've entered into that physical place, and that is their refuge. It's not the same with God. With God, God is not a physical location, And so how does the psalmist say, God, in you, I find refuge? I believe what the psalmist is getting at is that God's presence is available to you anytime, anywhere. It it means that it does not matter where the path of life takes you, because wherever that path takes you, God is still there. The important thing, then, is being able to learn how to enter into God's presence, finding God as refuge whenever you need it most. Here's what that looks like. Those times where you are overly stressed or overly irritable and and something in you is just not balanced and not right, it's remembering that God is there, right there in that moment. That God is there and God is available to you as refuge, as a source of strength. And, and it's not only remembering, but then it's being able to enter into God's presence. Just like you enter into a building to find shelter and refuge, it's entering into God's presence to say, God, I need to take refuge in you right now. I believe that's what the psalmist is saying when he says, God, in you I take refuge. How do you do that? Because I I believe there's a hundred different ways that we can find a a, a place of, of entering into God's presence and resting in God's presence so that your soul finds some sort of peace. Uh, Here's a, in case you've not really done that before, here's a couple of ways that I'd recommend. Perhaps for you, it's simply taking a couple of deep breaths and clearing your mind of all the worries or the things that go wrong or or whatever's racing in your mind, it's simply then focusing on God being here with you. Or perhaps for you, it's reciting a a Bible verse, 
a verse that centers you on the fact that God is here, right here, right now. Or perhaps for you, it's, it's going to God in prayer and simply asking God, God, calm me enough so that I can enter into your presence right now. We know that God is always present. God is right here. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, God is with you as well. That never changes. The only thing that changes is our awareness of God's presence. Remembering that we can enter into God as refuge any time we need it. Well, and if those ways don't work, let's see how the psalmist, how does he go on to say that he enters into God as refuge? Uh, he goes on in verse 2 by saying, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out drink offerings of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. The psalmist is saying that for him, in order to enter in to God as refuge, he begins by simply affirming who God is in his life. He says, you are my Lord. And apart from you, I have no good thing. That's a way of saying, God, you are my God and you are my life. And, and once you acknowledge who God is for you in that moment where you need God, then it's about setting your priorities and saying, I'm going to remember that I can get into God's presence and find God as refuge. You can see how he set his priorities where he said, well, in the land that, that I live, I see people who are, are trying to live a holy life, and, and those people who are trying to follow God's commands. He calls them the noble ones. He says, I also see people who, well, they're going their own way. They're, they're creating their own gods. They're sacrificing to those gods. The psalmist says that you can pick your priorities, you can choose who to follow, and where you go is where your heart is going to be open to in terms of then finding God's presence in your life. Graduates, a quick note to you. You also have a choice of how you're going to set your priorities. Uh, you're entering into a stage of life where no one's going to set your schedule for you. It's going to be up to you. I strongly encourage you to not neglect the spiritual side of your life, to be able to echo the psalmist's words saying, you, Lord, are my Lord, and apart from you, I have no good thing. As you go off either into the, the workplace or off to college, and you're in control of your schedule, can you set your priorities in such a way where you can make God at the very center of your week. And for the rest of us, well, you can do the same thing. Because remember, God is your constant. Wherever you are, wherever life takes you, there God is. And you can learn how to enter into God as a place of refuge. Here's the second way that the author explores this idea of God being the constant in your life. Verse 5 says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. This was written after a time where the nation of Israel entered into a new land. And when they entered into the land, then they divided it up amongst themselves. There were 12 tribes of Israel, and each tribe got a different portion of the land, except for one tribe, the tribe of Levi. The Levites were a tribe made up completely of priests, and the tribe of priests did not get any land. 
They did not get any inheritance. And you might think, well, that's unfair. Why did this one tribe get left out? But the reason is because God was going to be their inheritance. God was going to provide for all of their needs. Uh, We see how this first came about in the book of Deuteronomy when it says that the Levitical priests, that tribe of Levi, are to have no allotment or inheritance with Israel, meaning no land. They shall live on the food offerings presented to the Lord, for that is their inheritance. They shall have no inheritance among their fellow Israelites, because the Lord is their inheritance, as he promised them. The author of this psalm is encouraging us to put ourselves in the place of one of those Levites who received no inheritance, no portion of the land, because we're viewing God as all that we need. It's as if the the writer of the psalm is encouraging us to say, God, you alone are my portion. I don't need any other portion of land. I don't need any other uh, inheritance. God, you are all I need. It's like he's saying, God, you alone are my cup. You provide for all my physical needs, my food, my water. You, God, are my sustenance. God, you alone make my lot secure. Yes, I may not have any physical land to to give to my children for generations, but God, you still make me secure. It's from you I receive my security. And because of all of that, The psalmist can say, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. Well, boundary lines are are like property lines. And this person that we're supposed to put ourselves in the place of was given no property. They don't have any inheritance that can be delightful. They don't have Uh, property where they can say, look at these boundary lines. They fell in such a good location for me. And yet, he can still say that the boundary lines have fallen for him in pleasant places because God is his inheritance. God is his cup. God is his portion. God makes his life secure. Everything comes back to God. God is the constant. Saying that the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places is like saying, hey, life may not turn out exactly like I would expect it to, and yet life is still good because God is at the center of my life. I wonder if you can relate to that. I'm sure there have been parts of your life that have not turned out exactly as you were expecting them to or hoping that they would. Most of us would look to the past three months and say, that's not exactly how I would hope life would have turned out. But can we echo the psalmist's words by still saying that the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, meaning that no matter what I'm facing in life, the new challenges, the new experiences, it's still good, because God is at the very center of it. God, you are my portion. Well, graduates, If you are heading into college, then you're going to have so much of your focus be on learning and and discovering what you want to commit your life to. And uh, graduates of college, if you're done with college and you're not going to additional schooling, you then are going to discover how do you want to make a living and what do you want to commit your life to. Remember, based on these words, remember that your worth does not come from what you do or how much you make, because God is your portion. Yes, God is what will give your life meaning and all the accomplishments that you will no doubt accomplish within the tenure of your work and your life and your college career. God is what makes all of those accomplishments meaningful. To everyone else, remember, God is your portion. 
Do not spend your life chasing after things that will not last. Now, at the end of the day, God is all that you need. What have we learned so far from this psalm? First, it is in God that you can take refuge. God's presence is available anytime, anywhere. And second, God is your portion. It is through God that you can live a meaningful life. What is the third and final advice that the psalmist gives us? Well, it's, it's this. We start in verse 7. It says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. Well, in life, you will learn from many different people, but may God be your primary teacher. I can think of times in my life where I did not accept good counsel very well, and usually that was because of pride or, or arrogance, thinking that I knew a, a better way. The psalmist is encouraging us in this poem to praise God because of God's counsel, which takes a, a certain sense of humbleness, doesn't it? To go to God and saying, God, I have my own way, but my own ideas of how I'd like for life to turn out, but God, I want to praise your counsel. I want to learn from you as a primary teacher in my life. And not only that, but he goes on and says, and I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You show me the path of life, and you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures with at your right hand. Well, graduates, you are about to embark into a completely new world, and I pray that you will find this path of life that God is directing us towards. I believe that God will show you the path of life if you will let him. Here are some practical tips, though for you embracing this new world, these new experiences, to find that path wherever uh, you end up going. Uh, the first tip, graduates, that I would leave you with is to find a church wherever you end up living. Find a community of faith that you can become rooted in. Uh, now, I'm partial to Presbyterian churches, but really it can be any church that you feel like you're learning about God and the gospel from its teachings, and where you feel a part of a, a community of faith that encourages you as you continue to walk this path of life with God. Uh, if you are going to a, a new college or moving to a new state um, for a job and you don't know churches in the area, uh, please reach out to myself or Pastor Dana. We would be happy to help assist you in finding a church in that area. So that's the first tip I have for you graduates, is to simply find a church to become rooted in wherever you end up going. The second is be faithful to God in whatever career you pursue. There's no one job or career that will please God. God wants faithful Christians in all sorts of jobs and careers. The key is being willing to honor God with whatever you do and whatever career you end up pursuing. And the final thing I'll leave you with is what we began this with, which is to remember that God is your constant that you may be living away from your family for the first time in your life or the furthest from your family that you've ever lived, but wherever you go and wherever the path leads you, God is still there. God is your constant, and you can always enter into God's presence wherever you are. For all of us, I will lead, leave you with this. Find refuge in God 
Acknowledge God as your portion and seek to walk the path of life with God as your teacher and guide. Amen. If you would like more information about Unity Presbyterian Church, please visit our website at www.unitypres.org or visit us on Facebook. This is the Unity Presbyterian Church Podcast. Have a great week.